In this video, I'll be discussing how economists and other social scientists measure the amount of income inequality in an economy. Specifically, we're going to be looking at two tools. These two tools are the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient. Okay, so our first uh, tool is the Lorenz curve, and the Lorenz curve is a graph. Uh, it's drawn on a two-dimensional axis, and um, it can be used to show the level of inequality and the income distribution in an economy. And the second tool is the Gini coefficient, which is a statistic, which means that it's a number, and it also measures the degree of inequality in the economy. So we said the Lorenz curve is a graph, and it's a two-dimensional graph. So we want to discuss that graphing space in the two axes. So here on the horizontal axis, uh, what we have is the cumulative share of households. So this is, goes from 0 up to 100, and it's measured in percent. And we put the poorest households at the bottom, so this is the 10% poorest households. This represents the 20% poorest, the bottom half of the income distribution, and then we add on the higher income households uh, cumulatively to get up to 100. And then on the vertical axis, what we have is the cumulative share of income, starting at 10% of the income in the economy, 50%, 100%, and so on. And then what we have here is this red line. And what does that red line mean? Well, this red line we call the line of equality. And the reason we call it that is because at every point along this line, the percentage of income is, is the same as the percentage of households. So 30% of income along that line corresponds to 30% of households. 60% of income, if we go out to that line, corresponds to 60% of households. And uh, if uh, the economy actually was at this line, uh, throughout, then what we would see is a perfect distribution of income, where income would be proportional uh, to the number of households. So 10% of households get 10% of income, 70% of households, 70%, and so on. Each household would have the same amount of income. Now we're ready to draw a Lorenz curve. So you can see here that the Lorenz curve is this blue curve here. It's a convex curve that's beneath the line of equality. And this does uh, present uh, a distribution of income that could exist in an economy. So what would this tell us about that distribution? Well, let's look here, for instance, at 30% of households. This is 30% of households with the lowest income, so the bottom 30% in the income distribution. So if we start there, we go up to the Lorenz curve and then over we can see that, okay, that 30% of households, they receive something that looks like, I don't know, 16 or 17% of all the income in the economy. Or we can look over here, the bottom half of the income distribution. This represents the 50% of households with the lowest income. We go up to the Lorenz curve, and it's going to tell us that for this economy, the bottom half of the income distribution gets a little over 30%, maybe that's 33 34% of total income in the economy. And all along this curve, it's telling us what share of income goes to the different um, levels or different parts of the income distribution down here. So one thing we can do with Lorenz curves is we can compare the income distributions in different economies. So here what we're looking at is a Lorenz curve for Canada, okay, in blue, and a lens curve for the U.S. that's in green. So here's Canada's, and here's the U.S. And what we're going to see is a basic rule about Lorenz curves, which is the further away the Lorenz curve is from the line of equality, the further out it is, then the more unequal the distribution of income is. So Let's see how that works. Let's look at that bottom half of the income distribution, the bottom half that has the lower amount of income. If we go up to the U.S., um, Lorenz curve is drawn in this graph here, and then over here 
to the cumulative share of income, we see it's about maybe 14% or something like that, 13% of income goes to the bottom half of the income distribution in the United States, which would be very unequal. I'm just drawing these curves, of course. These not, this is for illustration. And then let's look at the bottom half of the distribution for Canada. We go over the 50% income, I mean, of, of households. And this would show us that in Canada, the bottom half of the income distribution that uh, receives something like 33-34%. And so again, just to note that the further the, Loren the uh, Lorenz curve is from that line of equality, the greater the inequality in the income distribution. So here again we have two Lorenz curves. Uh, but this time what they're showing is a little bit different. What we're showing is a difference between uh, time periods. So 1990 here and 2010 here corresponding to these two Lorenz curves. And so the Lorenz curve, in this case, what can illustrate for us is a change in the income distribution over time. And this is showing that between 1990 on the blue Lorenz curve and 2010, that the income distribution increased. And we can tell that because the black uh, Lorenz curve is further away from the line of equality. And for instance, the lower 50% um, in 2010 will get about 20% of the income, whereas uh, 20 years later, uh, earlier, they were getting about 35%. And so that's just another illustration so now let's talk about that second tool that social scientists use to measure inequality in an economy, and that is this one, the Gini coefficient, which we said is a statistic. It's a number, and um, let's see how that's put together. So again, here we have this graph, the Lorenz curve here in red, that convex curve here, of course, the line of inequality. And what we did is we designated two areas. One area is the area that's above the Lorenz curve but below the line of equality, and we call that area A. The other area in this graph is below the line of inequality, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, below the Lorenz curve and above the horizontal uh, axis, and we call that area area B. And the way we derive the Gini coefficient is by this formula here, right? It is the area A, the top here, divided by the entire area that's under the line of equality there. And so it's basically saying um, what is essentially the ratio or the percentage of this total area under the line of inequality uh, that's taken up by, uh, by area A. So how is it that we see that the Gini coefficient is related to the level of inequality in an economy? Well, if we look at the equation here, A over A plus B, right, it's A over this entire area here, and this, this equation is saying, well, what proportion of the entire area is made up by A? And so what we have here is two Lorenz curves, one here, one here. This is the one that shows higher inequality. It's bent further away from the line of equality. And as we talked about, that means higher inequality. As that Lorenz curve bends further away from the line of equality, of course, A, the area A, becomes larger and takes up a larger proportion of this, in total, this total area here. And so as there's higher inequality, the area A goes up and the Gini coefficient becomes larger. As A goes up, this whole expression becomes larger. The other thing that we know is that the Gini coefficient is between the values of 0 and 1. And that's because, again, it's because um, if, uh, if there's any inequality at all, even just a little bit, then the Lorenz curve will be you know, just under the line of equality. And so just a little bit over zero would be the area A. On the other hand, if it was very unequal, the Lorenz curve would be bent all the way down here. It'd take up almost that entire area. And so the Gini coefficient would be very close to one. 
So we're going to be looking for a value between 0 and 1 for the Gini coefficient. Okay, so let's take a look at some actual Gini coefficients as estimated uh, by the World Bank. Uh, and this is for the years 2010, 2011. And we can see that um, Canada had a Gini coefficient of 0.34. South Africa, 0.65, the United States, 0.41. And so this is showing that Canada had the most equal uh, income distribution with the U.S. coming after it and South Africa being much more unequal with the highest Gini coefficient. Okay, and now in this case, what we're doing is we're looking at two countries, Canada and the U.S., but we're also looking at two time periods and looking at what happened over time. So if we look at Canada, we see the Gini coefficient went from 0.31 to 0.34. So inequality increased by a relatively um, small amount, I guess you would say. And in the U.S., also inequality increased um, by about the same amount, but from a higher level um, in that about 20-year period. Okay, so now we come to the end of our video about uh, the Gini coefficient and what it is and how to calculate it. I hope it was helpful. Uh, this is Jim Burke from Mount Holyoke College.